Jams and jellies and syrups are another really fun thing to um, learn to preserve. Uh, you can use any sort of berry or fruit and create a really delicious food for yourself or they make great gifts. Um, jams and jellies are a product that need to be um, processed in a water bath canner and we discussed that the last session. So um, some things I brought to show you about the jams and jellies that are important is again, for processing, you need to remember to adjust for our whatever altitude you live at. And for that, you need to refer to your canning book. But some of the other things you need to know are jams and jellies um, require pectin Pectin is a naturally occurring compound in fruits that um, causes them to gel. Most fruits do not have enough of that natural compound in them to make a gelled product. So we need to add some of that to your recipe to make sure we get a good solid gel. Um, the recipes for jams and jellies are very specific as to what form of pectin you use. We have the classic pectin, which you use with um, normal amount of sugar. And then we have the lower sugar pectin that you can make products that have lower amounts of sugar in them. And then we have the liquid pectin that comes in a pouch. And there are very specific recipes for each types of these pectins. The other thing that's um, come out in the last few years, usually you'll see pectin in boxes, but now you can buy it in bulk. And three tablespoons of the bulk pectin equal one box of pectin. Um, so again, you need to see on your label, this is the reduced sugar pectin. So if you're wanting to do those kind of recipes, make sure you get the right kind of pectin. A lot of recipes are going to call for the powdered pectin. There's fewer that call for the liquid pectin. But one of my favorites, the jalapeno jelly, calls for liquid pectin. And what it looks like, it kind of looks like corn syrup. So. Um, and these all have expiration dates on them. Pectin um, does age out kind of and its potency gets less. So be sure to check its expiration date on, on the box or the, the can. And the expiration date is usually pretty long. We just bought this pectin and it is good until 20, March of 2021. So a good year. The other thing we talked about in, in a previous session was always choosing the right size of jars and the right kinds of jars. So I brought several examples of jam or jelly that I've collected over the years that was um, canned in the wrong kind of jar. So we have a peanut butter jar, we have a um, ice cream topping jar, we have a pickle jar and two spaghetti jars. And what happens with this is um, a lot of times in the wrong size of jar, jelly is meant to be um, canned in an eight ounce or a 12 ounce jar. Anything bigger than that oftentimes, it does not um, gel right. And so we get gloppy jelly, we get syrup, um, Sometimes we get those anyway, even if you've done everything right. But having the wrong kind inside the jar is almost a surefire way of your jam and jelly not setting up. Some of the tools that really help make jam and jelly making easier is you have a cone strainer like this with a um, bag in there. And this is a actual um, bag made for the strainer and it's very very um, finely woven or you can make your own jelly bag 
with um, cheesecloth. And what you would do is you would cook your fruit and um, pour the fruit, once it is cooked and kind of pulpy, into this bag. You then put this strainer over a bowl and the clear juice runs through the jelly bag and the strainer and that will make your clear um, juice for your jelly. If you want jam, you can um, first strain it for um, jelly and then you can actually pulp up what is left, pour your pulp into your strainer and mush, mush that through so you get the real pulpy stuff. And that's good for jams, those kind of things. Um, the other thing you could use um, the pulp for is, um, we make choke cherry pie at our house. And what you do is you first strain the juice up to make the jelly. Then you would pour all that pulpy fruit into your strainer and you would just mush it. And you get kind of this pulpy, fine pulpy um, mixture down here of, and your seeds are in here. And then we make like, it's almost like a cream pie out of that pulp. And it is my favorite in the whole world. So you can do a lot of different things with the strainer to um, speed this process along. If you do not have one of these, if you have a um, colander with a fine screen sieve, you can do the same thing. Get your piece of cheesecloth, line it, and strain your fruit through that. One of our newest, funnest things that we have purchased in a long time is a juicer. And again, like all the other appliances that you have or special equipment, you need to keep that instruction book handy. And basically what this is going to do is combine cooking your berries on the stove and then putting them through your strainer. It does it all in one process. So how this works, it has a water reservoir on the bottom. You fill that with three quarts of water. Then you, um, this looks kind of like a giant angel food cake pan. And it sits next, it has a juice spigot here. Sits on top of the water. Then you put your fruit in the um, basket that has holes in it. You put it on top, put our lid on, and like our one um, stainless steel canner, it has a glass lid, which is really good. You can see what's going on down in there. And then you bring this to a boil, and in your instruction book, it tells you how long you will need to juice each kind of fruit. So we have done blueberries in here, and then made blueberry syrup, and it was so slick. And it didn't take long, and as they start to juice, it will fill up this middle container. Then you open the spigot and drain that juice out into a bowl, close the spigot, and it will keep filling up. And when we got done, there was hardly any um, thing left. It had juiced so well, we had some skins and the seeds, but there was basically no pulp left. So this is a fun thing to experiment with. They're a lot more costly than this method. So I would decide if you really like to make jam and jelly before you invest in a piece of equipment like this. The other thing is years and years ago, we talked about the jar that you just sealed with wax. You would put your jelly in the jar and then you would melt candle wax on top of it or paraffin that came in a, a block. And then you would pour that hot paraffin over your jam or your jelly. And that's how you would put it on the shelf. And when you got it out to eat, you 
pop that paraffin seal off, and underneath many times was mold. So at that point in our lives, we would scrape that mold off and you would go ahead and eat the jam or jelly underneath. It has now been determined when that mold appears, and even if it does appear on one of your jars that you thought was sealed and wasn't, you need to throw that jar away. The mold now, we know, grows throughout that entire product and can be harmful to your health. So, we recommend that you no longer use the um, paraffin method of sealing. Once you get all your jars filled with your jelly after you cook the fruit, drain your juice off, and you make your actual jelly, fill up your jars, um, get the lids on, you will process all gems and jellies in a water bath canner. At our altitude, we need to process them for 10 minutes. So you, again, you need to check your book and adjust that time period. So we make jams and jellies sometimes for Christmas presents or other special occasion. They make great gifts and are pretty to look at and delicious to eat. So as the fruit gets ripe this summer, we hope you'll enjoy making some jams and jellies.